here this afternoon. Uh, we're, um, there's a lot of stuff still going on. Everything is changing almost by the minute. Uh, I do want to recognize some other folks who are here, but maybe not up here. Uh, we have Brian Johnson, the, uh, uh, the mayor of Kennedale, I believe, is here. There he is. We have Oscar Trevino, the mayor of Northwestern Hills. Ron Jensen, the mayor of Grand Prairie. Uh, have I missed any other mayors at this time? Okay. Um, from our state, we have Chris Turner, uh, U.S. Rep our state representative. Just gave you a little demotion there. We have Nicole Collier. Uh, we have Beverly Powell, State Senator Beverly Powell. Uh, I know that I have a couple of my compadres, uh, Roy, I, I, and, and Devin is over here. Um, so again, what we are announcing today is um, a, about the third iteration of where we were last Friday when we declared our emergency uh, declarations. At that point in time, we were looking at around 250. Uh, then we changed it down to around uh, the 125, but let everybody kind of stay open. And what we're doing today is basically saying for the restaurants, it's either got to be curbside or drive, you know, drive by, drive through. Uh, we're closing down all the dining areas inside. Uh, we are also closing completely bars, lounges, taverns, commercial amusement establishments. And in case you're not real sure what that means, that covers the bingo halls, that covers the theaters. We're closing down gyms. We're also closing down private clubs and health clubs. Uh, what we are saying with regards to other kind of event centers or gathering places is that we want to limit that to 50% of occupancy with no more than 125. And again, that would be for event centers, hotel meeting space, retail stores, convenience stores, plazas, places of worship. And then again, with the malls, what we're going to have to look at there at is limiting it to the common areas. Uh, again, 50% with no more than 125, uh, whichever is less in those particular deals. Uh, and then with regards to the individual stores themselves at the malls, again, it would be 50% of occupancy uh, with a maximum of 125. Uh, we recognize that this is uh, much tighter. And again, what I would just say to you is that when we go about making these decisions, we do it after we have tried to communicate and to talk with all of the cities, or at least given them the opportunity to have given us feedback. Understand that within Tarrant County, we have 41 cities. We have nine separate, nine of those cities have their own separate emergency operation plan, and then we have the county uh, plan. So uh, we're not just an island to ourselves. And so when we make these decisions or when we're looking at changing these requirements, we really want to sit down and want to talk with our partners, make sure they understand the details, what the ramifications are of our changes, and they have an opportunity to convey that out to, um, to their first responders. Also, if there are ordinances need to be made for enforcement of those changes, we want to give them an opportunity, give them a time uh, to be able to do that. So what normally will happen is we'll have that meeting just as we did yesterday, and then today we will issue those new amended procedures and amended policies. Uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Betsy and let her make any comments that she'd like to make. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon, everybody. Strange times we're living in and difficult times. I see my council member, Carrie Moon, is also here. Carrie, we're glad to see you here. Uh, we're doing what Glenn said. We issued our changes this morning, posted to our website on a video that t specifies these. They are mandatory. They're not strongly recommended. They are mandatory. The only other thing that uh, you may be doing that I'm not sure you mentioned is we are limiting gatherings to 50 or fewer. That means all gatherings don't be in common areas. We strongly suggest private gatherings not be any more than that. We're also recommending that grocery stores, large retail establishments really adhere, even if they're not mandated, residential buildings, medical facilities, daycares will be exempt from that. But think about what you're doing. This has to be a regional approach. 
People travel back and forth between all areas, and we want everybody to be safe. Nothing that we've done as mayors or the judge and the commissioners has been done lightly. We're well aware this is a huge problem for businesses, for employees, medical teams from CDC to our own medical teams. Dr. Williams from UNT Health Science Center is here. So many more have been advising us. It's an incredibly fluid situation. Who would have thought last Thursday we would be at this position? The act that we took a couple of days ago with a little bit less limitations was to allow businesses to scale back. The public health people were advising us that 24 to 48 hours was not gonna damage anyone, but it would allow the businesses a chance to advise their employees, to scale back their inventory and their ordering, to give them a chance to work with people, potentially to draw their unemployment, a packet of what they might need to do. We've got business men here with us today. John Bunnell is here, Tim Love is here, and others from the restaurant association that we've been working very closely with. I also want to thank, take a second and thank, tell you and thank, we have an incredible team at the Joint Emergency Operations Center that has been working almost around the clock for three weeks now to stay on top of this as much as can be. They've scaled things to fit the public the best that we possibly can and to not create any more hardships than are humanly possible. And yet we know these are incredible hardships for all of you. Our team has relied, as I said earlier, on medical advice and all of you should be very proud of county employees, city employees, and every other mayor in here I know is proud of their employees. With that said, I'm gonna turn it over to Mayor Williams, and then I believe afterwards we're gonna take questions. Right, Judge? Yes. Okay, Mayor Williams. Thank you, Mayor Price. First of all, I want you to know that uh, we have been working with Tarrant County and our sister cities, and I'm very appreciative of the leadership that the County uh, Judge Whitley has shown and Mayor Price and the cooperation that's happening. But however, also, I need to thank many of our medical professionals there throughout the country and the world that have weighed in and provided great resources. I also need to uh, uh, say thank you to Mayor Jensen, who's reached out and communicated and, and we're all together once again here, Judge, in Tarrant County. And that's the Tarrant County way for us to work together. And it's so important because uh, before I go any further, though, I, I need to extend my thoughts and prayers to the James family as we have lost a citizen uh, here to this coronavirus. You know, we're in a fight right now, and, and there's no doubt about it, and we need to come together uh, here and moving forward uh, even more than we are. And then that is the Tarrant County way for us to work together and, and to collaborate and to, to bring the best out in our citizens. And that's what is, uh, we've done time and time again, and we've exhibited that resiliency, and it's so important for us to, to do that now. So at five o'clock today, our council convenes again, even after meeting a long time yesterday, we'll come back again. And uh, we will have more restrictions uh, that will be there, and I have no doubt we may be meeting tomorrow. And I'm very appreciative of Governor Abbott allowing us to be able to call emergency meetings because this situation is very fluid. Things are changing each and every day. Now, I also want to share with you uh, there's something that's happening in Arlington, and I bet it's happening in these other cities, but it's so important. Our churches have come together, and they are going out and, and delivering food, running errands to help those of our, our seniors who are needing help that are in the, the at-risk category here. They also have tonight uh, come together and, and ask for a night of prayer uh, there. And in addition to that, our mosque or synagogues are following suit uh, there. And I'm very, very uh, appreciative of the faith-based community. Yes, and in this disease, our, our seniors are most at risk, but let's think about taking care of our neighbors. That's something we can do with the phone and, and uh, with, our, with our emails and so forth and be checking on people, see if they need help. That's something very productive that is in our control that we can do. And, and the opportunity for us to listen to our fellow neighbors' concerns and pray with them and let them know they're not alone is huge. 
And one of the things I think that uh, we're all most proud of here in Tarrant County is the kindness and generosity that people have. And, and uh, we're going to need it uh, as we move through this and, and we journey through. We know the restrictions and measures that we're taking are going to be very painful uh, there. But however, we hope that the reward will be a shorter time in which this virus uh, is there. And that's, that's the hope. But then the thing that is so hard is that we have to continue to maintain at the top the well-being and health of our citizens. And then secondary there, of course, but also important is taking care of our first responders and essential services. And then the third is to try to continue to maintain life as we know it uh, here, to be able to have a job and for our, our citizens to be able to get to, to continue to provide for their families. But I want to assure you that our Tarrant County Public Health our city's offices of emergency management are all ready. They have been working now for weeks, and yes, they're working together. And the governor today pledged great resources that he actually opened the door to to the federal government uh, there for more supplies to come in. And let us continue to try to work to make smart decisions, but also understand that we're going to be working fast too so that we can be sure and try to stay up with the, the developments that occur and try to make sure that we continue to keep the health of our citizens at the top. Now, there's a lot of misinformation out there, and please don't go to Facebook for your answers. Uh, please go to reputable sources. And I just want to say our, our our Tarrant County, our city's websites are well versed. They're uh, they're giving the information there. For us, it's ArlingtonTX.gov/coronavirus. This site offers new articles, prevention tips, information about what Arlington and Tarrant County are doing, and it stays up to date and, and many times is updated every hour uh, there. And of course, also we get the latest news from the CDC, and I know that our people are hungry for information, and this is the right place to go, and, I, and, and be sure and go to reputable sources. The other thing I want to say is that our, our fire departments have managed infectious diseases over the years as part of their responsibility here to our, to our communities in our county, and they have dealt with other major outbreaks. They're prepared and they're up to the task. And while there's still a lot we don't know about coronavirus, our first responders have been through these situations before and they are working hard. And then I uh, mentioned that we're in a fight. Well, this is a fight against something that we can't see and it's a different kind of fight because we're actually fighting against the habits that we have developed. We can't be shaking hands. We've got to be sure that we avoid uh, sneezing and coughing uh, there to, to expose. We've got to be better than that. We've got to wash our hands and continually work to keep our cells healthy. And then in addition to that, don't be touching your eyes and mouth uh, with unwashed hands. And, and please remember that this is part of that prevention to take care of yourself and to remind other people to do that so that we can cut down on the spread. And then, probably most importantly all, if you are experiencing symptoms and you think you may have COVID, if you have the coronavirus, please call Tarrant County's corona Coronavirus Hotline at 817-248-6299. That's 817-248-6299, and you'll be given the latest information so that you can be taken care of. Now, I also have to say thank you to so many of our businesses that have cooperated even ahead of time of these restrictions. I've been so impressed, how, and I'll just name our restaurants in particular there who have, who have been willing to cooperate and move our, our theaters, our events uh, there, and that's so important. And that is tough because we're closing their facilities. Well, having said that, most of all of our city services and our county services are all open. They have remained unaffected. 
our emergency response, garbage and recycling, water utilities, and many more. And then speaking of our first responders, let's also keep them and the employees in the medical community in our thoughts and prayers as well. As they work to help us get through this and minimize the spread of the virus, they are putting themselves at risk. Let us uh, remember them uh, as they work so hard for us. Now, in closing, we will work together. We will come through this and be stronger than we were before, but let's continue to the collaborative spirit that Tarrant County has set and let's work together to beat this. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jeff. And we're going to just immediately get to questions, but I do want to say and echo a little bit of what Jeff said. I think we have a tremendous spirit of generosity within Tarrant County. We have group meeting every morning where we bring on folks from the various segments of our county, the hospitals, the schools, the senior centers, the uh, Meals on Wheels, and we've got one group that's called Volunteers. And I'm, you know, I'm just betting that that particular organization is going to get overrun in the next couple of days because folks are going to be there and they're going to want to help in any way they can. Uh, Jeff also mentioned the restaurants that we had closed down their dining areas. I see John Bonnell here and I know that y'all are making an effort to do some things. Uh, you can tell that I told him that he was going to be asked to speak because he is dressed appropriately. <laughs> so John, if you wouldn't mind just very brief, come on up here and just tell a little bit about the effort that's going on. Well, thanks for having me. Um, on behalf of the independent restaurants in the, in the Fort Worth area, we all agree that this, as hard as it's been for all of us to close our businesses, this was the right decision. And we, we applaud the decision that you've made, even though it's the most difficult thing we've ever seen. I've been in communication with about 120 of the local restaurants. Roughly 50% have closed already. The remaining are trying to move to some sort of a model of curbside or delivery options. We don't have a lot of ideas. We don't have a lot of things that we can do besides that. And we understand for the health of our city, we're going we're gonna to try to get through this. I please encourage everyone, go to the Fort Worth website, visit Fort Worth. They've got a list of restaurants that are remaining open, and that's still fluid. It's changing all the time. Visit Fort Worth. Website will kind of help let you know which local places are still in business and what kind of services we are going to be providing. We're going to be doing some curbside family type dining. We've abandoned the idea of fine dining for this time. Those that have closed and those that have converted are hoping that we can limp along through this and on the other side of this, come back to a vibrant restaurant scene one day. So please keep supporting your locals. Thank you, John. I know Tim Love is also here. Um, let me, John, ask you to do one thing. Let's make it visit Tarrant County or let's be sure that we reach out to the other cities and give their restaurants a chance also uh, one of the things that is we've talked with the various groups that we're trying to encourage them to do is on the websites have one number that folks can call into and that it will or, or one website that we can put a statement on and then give them the ability to call a number that will then you know, maybe it asks them where they are. Maybe you just list the restaurants. The Visit Fort Worth he's referencing isn't just for this. That Visit Fort Worth is our Convention and Visitors Bureau website. They just provided a website. They provided a link on the CVB, which is now Visit Fort Worth's website, and they are linked over to many of your, to North Richmond Hills, Kennedale, Grand Prairie, Arlington. They're linked yes. what's closing here over for a list of them on their websites also. So encourage your, your the mayors, other folks, encourage your restaurants to also be a part of this. Judge, I've got a story for you. And John, really appreciate your comments because, you know, Bunnell's is one of those that's near and dear to all of our hearts. Well, there are all of these restaurants and we think about the jobs and so forth there that, uh, that are at stake here in, in the future. Last night, uh, there after we got done with our council meeting, uh, we went over and visited Jay Gilligan's, uh, Trey Overton, city manager, and I did. Well, we were amazed at the innovation of Randy Ford there. He already had made a drive-through lane, and then he had a booth set up so he could take the money, covered porch, 
so he could go out, deliver his food, and come through. He said he had already had 60 cars come through, and he just put it on social media, what, two hours earlier. And that's what needs to happen, too. This, this is a safe way for us to, to get food and to patronize our restaurants, and they're doing a great service. Because in addition to that, they're they're getting the food supply out there, and that, that's a that's an awesome thing. So uh, I I know our restaurateurs are going to get really creative, and I hope Von Els will do takeout service too. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Starting, great. Starting Saturday. Okay, we're going to open it up now for uh, for questions. <clears throat> What I indicated was what our Tarrant County, but it's, it's similar in Fort Worth, it's similar in Arlington. Again, our goal is to be consistent among all the cities within Tarrant County. It's mandatory in Fort Worth with yep. enforcement capability. But is it just a recommendation that Tarrant County follow those? Well, we're what we're saying is we want to make it mandatory and we're going to get to the point where if we have to enforce it through basically fines and things along that lines, we will. Thus far, when we've asked folks to do it, they've done it. If we find that there's folks that are not willing to do that, then we will at that point in time enforce it and put the teeth behind it that we need to put behind it. We can do a lot of what ifing. What we have said. Okay, I'm sorry. It was why didn't we, in, you know, why didn't we make these restrictions earlier, with uh, in with in line with the CDC? And as I said, we can do a lot of what ifing. What we are trying to do, and we looked at, we had our first community spread case on Monday morning. So at that point in time, we called everyone together, and began to have a discussion about bringing it and wrapping it down. Uh, much more significantly at that point in time. Again, as I said, we have nine different plans, city plans, and then we have a county plan. So we're going to try to work collectively together and not try to, you know, keep all kinds of variety all over the place and make sure everybody understands what's happening. The, community, the, the county judges are kind of texting back and forth. Now, that's the six big county judges that are doing that right now. But what we're just saying is, where are y'all? What are y'all thinking about doing? Uh, you know, at one point, um, and I don't even remember the days, to be very honest with you right now. Everything's kind of bleeded together. Dallas, you know, someone said Dallas had closed everything. In fact, I think it was a conversation I had with the mayor there in Grand Prairie. Uh, and the judge said, well, we're about to, but we haven't officially put something out. And he, very shortly after that, they did. Uh, we closed down the schools um, about a week or so before Dallas did. So we're, we're trying to talk through that process. But again, what we're trying to do is, again, make sure that all of our partners are a part of the decision and have an opportunity to give us input on the deal. Yeah, as far as next steps go, that has not been determined. But then a week ago, I couldn't have told you that we are where we are now. We meet every day, several times a day, and evaluate that. We're taking the advice of medical professionals, and our public health director, Vinny, is here, and the city's public health authority. And we're acting on that along with input from, like, Dr. Williams and other medical. So it's hard to tell you what next step might be. I'm comfortable with where we've been. As far as enforcing, our code has been out. Brandon, you might want to come up, is shaking his head. They've been out delivering to all the bars and restaurants a copy of the notice. And we started that two days ago when we changed the first lines. And 
in that notice it stated what we were doing then, but it also advised them that they would likely see additional enforcement. Now they will be back doing that. Brandon, you want to comment? But we're actively enforcing that piece of it. Brandon Bennett, who's our Code Compliance and Public Health Director, Public Health Authority. Yeah, we, we have not had to do any enforcement action at this point, and, and really that's because of the voluntary compliance that we've received. You know, one of the things that we did is we were able to telegraph. So I think one of the earlier questions was, um, you know, we're different than Dallas. We're maybe not doing the same things that Dallas is doing. And one of the things we have to remember when it comes to public health and, and actually tracing um, the, the community viral spread is that Dallas was the one that had the first cases or the Dallas area up in Collin County. So there are things that they implemented first and there are things that we implemented thereafter and so when you're talking about how you allocate scarce resources you want to put the resources where they're going to provide the greatest public benefit and so what you see is a stair-stepping approach of, of the use of these these resources so from an enforcement standpoint we were able to reach out early and say can we get your help and in fact, a lot of the restaurants had already shut down, had already reduced to, to less than 50% long before we ever knocked on the door. And as we went about today, uh, fire department and code compliance staff to, to give everybody uh, additional information that this order was coming, most of them had closed the doors or were in the process of closing the doors because of the information that they had received. So it, it, it's going very well in that respect. And you'd be amazed at the number of restaurants who did call and say, go ahead and close it for them to have a chance to cut their inventory, to advise their employees. So we're just following in that suit. Let me and make it, one other comment. Um, yeah, we had a press conference with the governor earlier today. He has got a call, I know um, a listening call at five o'clock today with I know the county officials. I don't know if he's also set one up yet with TML and through the, that. What he's trying to do is gain information and suggestions and, and listen to what the various county judges around the state are saying. Um, and what I would say to that is this is very rapidly as it's growing, becoming something that it's not just in a few pockets. Uh, last Friday, the governor said today that it was basically in seven counties. Today it's in, I believe, 22 counties. So it's tripled in a matter of about four days. So I think he's now beginning to to say we've got to call, we've got to communicate, we want to hear from you before we issue uh, what we may need to do or what we feel like we need to do. And I think at that point in time, then again, what we're saying is it's spreading enough now that uh, we're going to have to watch and maybe take more of a statewide uh, approach to the thing. What we're, what we're basically saying is, I'm sorry, um, the question was as far as our ability to enforce the laws or the recommendations that we're making. Uh, again, yes, that is changing our ordinance of uh, making ability. We've talked about that with the governor, and we feel like that we're going to be able to put the teeth behind that that we're going to need to put behind it in order to make it widespread. The cities already have that authority. And most of Tarrant County is within the cities, but there's still parts of it that is not. And so what we're going to encourage the cities to do to look at their ordinances, again, they will have to, you know, they may have to adjust or change those, but we feel certain that we have the ability uh, or will have the ability to be able to enforce with teeth what uh, we're recommend strongly recommending. And again, I want to say that our folks have been very good about listening to our recommendations and following those, and we really haven't had to go out and basically insist or try to push people to do what we had asked them to do. Any other? Okay. Thank uh, let me, let me explain ahead. one quick suggestion. There are a lot of experts in this room. Our fire chief is here, who's in public health. The director of public health is here. The sheriff is here, Doc, Dr. Williams is here, so many more. Brandon, also Tim Love has a great potential plan for helping feed people, should we be in need of that, that the restaurants will be working with. John, all of them would be glad to take your questions coming from some of these experts. Citizens would appreciate that too. 
tell your viewers to reach out. This is Facebook, fi prime time, anything to reach those who are isolated. Get in touch with their family members. Get in touch with their grandchildren. Spend a little quality of time together, or at least on Facebook, and take care of each other. I know you will in Tarrant County's best way, in Fort Worth, and Arlington, and all the other cities, too. Thank you. Certainly the mayor's Facebook page is a trusted site. Thank you to Mayor Johnson, Mayor Trevino, and Mayor Jensen uh, here for being here. And then also, I've got to say a special thank you. The, the elected officials at all levels, uh, their county, state and federal have all reached out, been a part of this, and, and today, in fact, we've all been together here, and, and there truly is solidarity here, and this is a, a time for us to be unified and very appreciative of that. Thank you very much. We're going to get through it. We're planned for it. We're ready to go. So, again, just help us join the team, and let's get through this. Thank you all.